Yeah, so we can go. So whenever you're ready, Justin, you can start. All right, let's go. Yeah. So, so for me personally, I've always been interested in history. One of the difficult things when you're someone in, interested in history after you've gone out of college, uh, you're finding resources all over and it's hard to mix them together and know where there's overlap, uh, how they fit together. So what I really wanted to do was create a tiddler that showed how they could overlap. So when I'm going to rewatch them, re-listen to them, or just when I'm following through in an order, I can follow along in a more visual fashion. In terms of dates, I've never been good with dates. So having a, a timeline has been something that I've never had before and it made, makes it a much more visual uh, way to look into history. So here we have the history of Rome and its immediate aftermath up until 1000 AD. And the way I created this was I started with a spreadsheet and I used the tool where I could ex import through Excel. And here you can see part of that spreadsheet. There was a sheet four, there's a sheet one. So each time I did a new import, I made a new sheet and updated the, uh, the import options. And so it's obviously, you wouldn't want to hand write all this. So what I used is iTunes. I was able to find these podcasts and resources through iTunes and pull in the table into the spreadsheet, do some small editing and go at it from that point so I wouldn't have to type up all of that. Then to get the actual links, because you don't want to view these in iTunes, is, uh, is actually what I mentioned inspired me initially to create this. One of the best resources for getting the raw files for this was a Reddit post that was made years ago. And it just lists them in order. And I had used this initially to go through them all so that I'd, I'd see them in order, I could get to them quickly. And I used a tool called Extract URL where you could paste the HTML into it and it gives you a list of all of the, uh, all of the URLs in order that they show up. And I was able to just copy and paste that into my Excel spreadsheet into this column and pull up uh, a pretty good spreadsheet without doing much work, at least not manual work. Uh, from there, let me head back to this. Could, just because we probably won't come back to this again, could you go back to your spreadsheet? Sure. And show me what's the difference between sheet one and sheet two? So sheet one is the podcasts. Uh -huh. So when I initially did this, I just did the podcasts and I was kind of using my imagination that it could be more than that. Okay. And I really thought in order to display this, how I would want to use it, uh, I, I needed to add a separate one. I could have added it underneath, but the way the podcasts work, which I'll show you in a moment yep. and how they display on it is a little different from the videos because the videos range a much longer period of time than the podcast. The podcasts are like 10 year period. So they're grouped into periods, the kingdom, the early Republic, while the videos are take up a big chunk of time. Okay. So they're different. So sheet one is podcast sheet two is videos. Yep. Okay. That's what I was after. And they, they become different types of tiddlers coming in. They do. Yep. Okay, uh, that's yeah. And that's a very, that's an excellent technique, by the way, to separate your tiddler types by worksheet. Well, what became really important to me is when I import them separately, I can add a separate tag for them because you can add that tag to all the ones you import. And what became really important when and if I messed up uh, is using this advanced search feature, which I don't know if anyone else mentioned. I haven't seen it anywhere uh, where you can search for, a certain tag in the presentation and you can delete everything with a certain tag. So say if I imported a hundred, you know, entries wrong, I could go back in and easily delete them. Yeah, no, yeah, I guess I should, I th thank you for discovering that. I really should focus on that. Cause I, uh, yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, if you after I, what's after I manually here, went through and deleted a hundred, I was like, I need to find a better way. <laughs> yeah. If you go back to design, right, you'll see that I did that today. <laughs> and the remnants of my filter are still there. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, simple. that's that's a really really good and helpful tool. Yeah, one thing I because sometimes like you come back to this years later. Yep. Months later or days later, depending on the state of your mind. So what I typically would do is I'd name the spreadsheets with my type of data. So instead of sheet one, I'd rename it to video, and sheet two, I call it podcast. That makes sense. Just as a, you know, sort of a documentation kind of layer. Yep. Yep. But 
So here you can see, I set it up so the blue are podcasts, the red are videos. And let me click on one to give you an idea. This is a list that pulls all of them that fall into the storm before the storm. And when I pick on one of them, uh, let me try another. Okay. It gives the description, the release date, and I can listen right from here. <laughs> so it's a nice little tool for me to go through them. Uh, Show me that again. So I just clicked on, let's just try another. Yep. Ju Julio Claudian Dynasty. Uh, let's say these are in the order that they, they were released. Yep. So that's why I had that sort column. Mm -hmm. uh, I click on all in the family. It gives me a brief description that it pulls from a field. Mm -hmm. And the release date of that actual podcast and a link that's set to open in a new window. This is all templated, so. Oh, oh God, okay. So, yeah, okay. Um, so, like, if I look into it, it's, it's pulling from templates. So I have a template file, so I can update all of them at once. Right, and it's pulling the um, URL out of field called link. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, cool, yeah. We can, um, you can, there's, you can, uh, I'll show you, you can run an audio player inside of TiddlyWiki. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's just right there. So there's a play button. You don't, you don't have to do wiki. It's very cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So let me scroll back up. Sorry, I didn't catch that earlier. I should, I should have, uh, but anyway, yeah. So I can zoom in on different areas, zoom out. And with the videos, How do you I do click, what's that? The chart is what's really cool, right? Yeah. I used uh, viz.js, which is a plugin and momentum.js, another plugin and the combination I was able to create the timeline. There's a lot of, a lot of people had trouble getting the dates at the bottom to show up with BC. So that was one of my biggest challenges. So the way I actually ended up having to do this was a lot of CSS. So I wrote all this CSS and basically it's saying, if there's, this is the key, this negative, put a BC in front of it. So it adds content in front of it uh, to make it display correctly. So. So this is the moment, which plugin are you using? I am using viz.js. Viz.js. And also moment.js. Okay. Nice, I've never seen them. That's, so that's like, that's what's really, really cool. I didn't know about any of this stuff. This is very, very cool. So can you show us the code again? And, and so what, what? So, so the what's, tip, what's the, the stuff that you transclude into here? Or do you do, do you, are you drawing each one of these boxes in that code? No. This is it. Okay. Tag period, start field equals start, end field equals end, format equals that. So then, so show us one of your period tiddlers. Sure. Well, actually, all of these are periods. Yeah, exactly. So when I click on one of these, this is one of the video examples. Right. It's got a period tag. Right. So let's oh. see the let's see the the fields for that. Sure. This is also a template. This is template three that pulls into it. Here's the fields related to it. So this is the date, the start date, and the end date. So they have to be in a very specific format yeah. for them to show up right. Uh, that took some trial and error to figure out, but those come, those come now from your spreadsheet. They do. Yep. They do. Yeah. Okay. So then when you screw them up, you, that's why you have to get them over and over again. Right. Yeah. Yep. And then, so, okay. So start then and show us where that's transcluded again in the, in the template. Sure. So right here. Tag start. Oh, start net. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yep. okay. And so, and then you put the format of that start and end date here. Right, and then what do you? And then you draw a rectangle. Oh, for this, uh, I added this on later. So I put in a CSS that would differentiate the videos from the podcast, mm -hmm. and basically, it's looking for tags that are within here to to tell it's a video. And actually, I use the professor's name. See how when I hover over it, it says Professor Friedman. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the code says whenever Professor Friedman's name shows up in there, make it red, and then I. <laughs> created a little SVG afterwards that, uh, that describes what you're looking at just so that it's more intuitive. You, video is red and podcast is blue. Okay, yeah. That's called the total kludge, right? Because you your data just happens to have that. 
in terms of the hover over. Yeah. 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 Differentiate the red from the blue. Is that it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you're colorblind, this might not be the best uh, way to do it. If I was going to actually make this accessible, I would have changed the, uh, the border on these. Right. Uh, so, so when somebody else comes in and they don't have Friedman in their content, they'll have to do something else. You would have to, when you're doing uh, your description, you would have a keyword in the description that starts off each field. So if I was adding more videos, I would make it so if it says Professor Friedman or maybe a video of, and then if each description starts a video of something, you know, there's ways that you could, you could standardize it a bit. Well, why would you, why do you need to pull off the description field? Can't you use a tag? So that's what I was trying to figure out. In reality, the podcast, this is pulling from a different field. This isn't pulling from the description for the podcast. Mm -hmm. And when I created these, I assumed it was going to pull from the, uh, from the title, this. So I was going to pull Yale History 210, so that would be consistent through all of them, uh, because that's the, uh, that's the open course that this comes from. But it didn't show up there. I wasn't quite sure why. I assume it has to deal with how I pulled it in, but I pulled it in using the same spreadsheet. So that was one of those things I hadn't quite figured out. Okay, yeah, so, so but it was sort of working enough. Yeah. So from there, when you're at one of the videos, you can see it works similar to the others. You click watch now, I set it to open in a new window and the videos are there. Uh, I was going to go directly to the videos. All these videos are on YouTube as well, but there's so much content here that for it to be more usable to me, it's nice to have it also in an MP3 format, different uh, formats in terms of the video as well. So it was kind of a personal preference that I wanted to go to this page. Well, actually, that's a really interesting um, comment, actually, you know, because you're using what your, I guess what your, your tool is, yep. is a tool to organize content for yourself and maybe yeah. for others. And by opening another a, a blank tab, you're right, going to a new tab, you don't, you, you provide all the functionality. Yep. But yeah, you, you could accomplish that with an iframe without leaving your app, but I like, but I think it's, it's an interest, it's an important design choice, right? Yeah, when you're using an iframe, you, you're limited in terms of width. And exactly, I, right. I, I would be using this on, a, on my cell phone when I'm at the gym, when I'm on. Exactly, right. <laughs> so, so I frame it, right. Yeah, yeah. And when I'm at the gym, I'm going to prefer, you know, the low bandwidth version over the 500 mm -hmm. megabyte version. So there was certain choices made with that to work out. Yeah, no, I think that that's a, that's a very, that's a very useful. So what you're, you're taking sort of the, um, like the, the, you're providing the least amount of data to make it useful for you. And then going to another tab is like a no brainer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And then you can always go back to your first one to get to the next place. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting to me after setting it up was, you can see some of the overlap. And when I want to go back and say, listen to Frankish Society, I might also be interested in something that happened at the same time in the podcast. So they fit together and they, they affect which ones I listen to and it, it, it makes them more cohesive. So for me, this is a really cool tool and I hope to add more of them because there's a lot of uh, history resources out there that I, I listen to. And, how they interact and how they fit all in together is something that, that I haven't had before. So, yeah, this is one of the things that I'm really, I, I'm really interested in seeing um, more of as well. I think the idea of, because like the content management basically yep. <laughs> <is> terrible, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and if you listen, like if you, yeah, so I do podcasts, you know, and just, and the interface is awful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the opportunity to write an interface on top of other people's content and add value just so this is like interface as value. Yep. Which is, and TiddlyWiki is actually really nice about that because it, it does that, that, that it's like, it's the knitting between the data, you know, and there's, I think there's a market for um, clearly, you know, and re shuffling other people's data and providing a cleaner interface. I mean, just the person that listed them all in a row, yeah. I mean, that, that resulted in people like 
excited, you know, this is great, I can use this. Yeah. Uh, so I yeah. think what I created kind of takes it to another level where it becomes even more usable. So exactly. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm still stumped because I don't understand what we're seeing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a timeline and yeah. it starts at around 800 BC with the founding of Rome. I get the, I get the, I get the X, Y, I get the X dimension. How are you getting the Y? How are you getting the stuff to stack up on? It automatically stacks. So the yeah. downside is the height of this is set to by, uh, by viz.js or whatever plugin tool is to 300 pixels. So I added some CSS that raised the height uh, so that there was more room. But other than that, it automatically stacks them if they're, if they're at the same time period. Like if I wanted to put this one underneath, mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't, I don't know of a way to do that. Well, they must be in an order, right? Yeah. I mean, they must be sorted by something. There's nothing that's not ordered. Yeah, but some of them have the same start date. Uh huh. So I would have to do some trial and error to figure out if. Yeah. So well, they're same. sorted by. I don't know what they're sorted by. Like, why is it like? It's weird. Yeah, I don't get like the Frankish society, and then the one above it, the. The blue. Uh, yes. So if I zoom in on that. Oh, okay. So if you zoom in, I see. So you zoom out. So how does it, because they've got start and end dates. Yes. They're the sort of from the bottom by start date or no, not exactly. It's just, it's, it's, in, yeah, it's weird. So these three probably have the same start date, but you would think. Right. This one's the shortest. This is the next shortest. This is the longest. I don't know how they pick the order. Interesting. Okay. And that's all black boxed to you. Yes. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So, and so in order to figure out how it works, you have to open the JavaScript and we're not doing that. So that's, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I get it. Yeah. What's the yellow thing right now? Why is that yellow? That's the one you last clicked on. So when you click off of it, like I did, it turns uh, back to the color. So if I click on the constant constant dynasty, that's what I get. It turns okay. yellow. And so you're navigating back to that again. Is that, so you're navigating from the JavaScript to the tiddler? Yes. Okay. Yep. So it's a navigate to, yeah. Okay. So, so the barbarians, then, right. the barbarians. So now is that, can you navigate from tiddler back to timeline? Uh, at the moment? No, it's not a bad idea to add to the template, something like a back to top, uh, maybe back to timeline. So the space in the time. Cause if you go, yeah, if you, if, oh, I see, if you put it back in the tiddler, and you went back to, if you put it in the template, you went back to your timeline, closing yep. all the your tiddlers, it would still be currently clicked. Yeah, because when I close it, it's yeah. still yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think that would be a great thing to put in your template is to close all the other tiddlers and navigate back to here when you're done, right? Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, cool. And um, yeah, that's just, yeah. Does it, how's it look on your phone? It, does, it, does the Zoom work? <laughs> I have to pull out my phone. <laughs> oh, you haven't looked. Okay, yeah, no, I, I haven't have... looked at it yet. Yeah, okay. It's yeah, it's very cool. Um so the year of the four emperors is a period. So that's one year. When they show up as one year, they're a period. So if I click it. Okay. And just like it says, the year of the four empire, emperors, it's uh, a single year. Stuff this, it's actually the same start and end date. Mm -hmm. What's the I probably should have put this as, uh, or this one as 70. And just to see what that looks like when I do that. Yeah, then it turns it into a little slice. <laughs> it's probably easier to use as a dot. I see. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. No, you've, you've, ex you've played with this way more than this is. Yeah. This is cool. I had no idea this existed. This is way. Um, did you do it? Did you do a, a sort of a tiddler that describes what you've done? For this project, yeah. other than the, uh, the Google groups post, yeah. that's all I have. Uh, okay. I could write something in more detail though. That would be fabulous. Yeah. Not a problem. This is, and, um,
and, and I will be releasing it. I should have done it today, but soon. I'm going to basically ask you to, as a final sort of reflection piece next week at some point, take an hour or so and kind of summarize all the different ones that you've done. Okay. But in the only one that, I mean, the last, the big projects, the, the, you know, the major projects that you did would be really nice to have. And then I want to collect the links and uh, you've seen in the group, tiddly tweeters begging us to archive. And, <laughs> yes, and I saw that. Right. He's right. And so, you know, that's, and so what we're going to do here is we'll have these videos and that would be great for people because it's like, you know, they, as you know, there's not that much, but, um, you know, and it's cool when you show, when people see apps and they see applications and they see ways of doing things and they, they play. Yeah. Yeah. At the very least it can be inspiring to make your own thing because I, I know I've gone through the group to get ideas, uh, yeah, just exactly. scrolling through some of the things they've created. Yeah. So what, what's your, what's your thinking about Tiddly Weeky and, and certainly, you know, be realistic about it. Like, you know, what, what are, what do you think its strengths are? What do you think its weaknesses are? And, and what do you think that's sort of distinctive? So in yeah. terms of its strength, I mean, I've worked in front end web development for about 10 years now, mm -hmm. and this has been the most realistic to learning how to do front end development because you're constantly put in situations where you don't know what you're, what you need to do, but you got to figure it out. And <laughs> TiddlyWiki can put you in that spot pretty often where you don't know why it's not working and you need to figure it out. And there's resources like that Google group to help figure that out. And those have been great. Uh, in terms of weaknesses, sometimes things that you expect to work just aren't working. For example, uh, the thing I ran into most in this project is capitalization when I import from Excel. Uh, I had the templates and they were based on capital, capital fields, capital title case, and it switched it to lowercase after maybe about 10 minutes of using it. So it, it kept initially working and then breaking. So it took a lot of trial and error to figure out how and why things were or weren't working in, in certain circumstances. That's but then sometimes it just all comes together and you're like, wow, everything worked. And those are the exciting times working with it. Yeah, so that was a very, that very specific to the SLSX plugin. Um, that yes. bug in that plugin or not necessarily a bug, but yeah, definitely field names always have to be lowercase has been my experience. So, yeah, but there's a lot of things in there that work a certain way that if yeah. you don't, you, once you get experience, you, you, you get more comfortable and you yeah. get in a groove with it. So did you find the, the transclusion as something that's important and have you seen, have you experienced using the concepts of transclusion and other front ends. So you, yeah. we use a Sitecore content mm -hmm. management system and we have a backend developer and they build a lot of databases for us. And as the front end side, we do a lot of calls that work as transclusions and they're actually pretty similar to how they work in here. Mm -hmm. So it's been pretty neat to use. Uh, they're actually much more powerful here than they are, uh, are for us in the workplace. So they've given me ideas of things that I might want to go back to the back end developer and ask for. Yeah. In what way are they more powerful? So for example, if you want to make a list, if you want to pull content in different ways, uh, that's much more powerful. If you want to pull based on a tag, we're very limited. It's one call yep. each time. So you're individually putting it each in there. Uh, this you can, you can pull from a certain tag and get a whole bunch of different stuff, which is so much more powerful. Yeah, that's the, the yeah. The, I, I, so I think that you've really hit on some of the distinctive features. You, you're talking about listing and, the, you know, you're, you're seeing it and it is, it's like, and so I just keep wondering, it's like, don't other systems do this? <laughs> and it's, it's got, it's, it's, uh, and I'm wondering, like uh, James, I think, you know, he, he's, he's, I'm wondering if it scales, you know, like if you could actually use this in a, in a production environment. Um, yeah. As long as you don't go over like 500 records. Well, you could probably go over 500 records depending on what they are. And, you know, you could get more aggressive in your pulling and, you know, and data management issues, but yeah. And many times you don't need 500 records, you know, you'd be surprised. So yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that tweeting project was much more than 500 records. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, you went. You hit ten thousand, but it does slow down. No, I, it was um eighty five thousand. Right, <laughs> right. That's a lot different. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's it's just it's 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 interesting. I think you and I think you hit some of the key points with the with the listing and the ability to list on tags and um, yeah, and then there's there and I keep finding there's more as you get you keep kind of spinning into a deeper level and it's like, wow. And, and I haven't hit the edges yet. <laughs> Although yeah. 8,000 is an edge. <laughs> it feels like almost anything you want to do, you can probably find a way to do it. Right. So it, that makes it a uh, pretty fun to use. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. And um, yeah. And so I think that there's opportunities and, you know, if you, and to, to work in and on, <laughs> Tiddly Wiki. Um, certainly, you can do any other class projects in it if you wanted to. You know, if you if you've got basically anything that you have to share. Yep. In any medium can be put here, and, and you could you know it, it you've seen in Design Right we embed YouTube, and you can embed audio. It's um, there's an embedded audio. You search for audio in tiddlywiki.com. Although I see why you don't want to you know, and the value of it, that's interesting. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, and certainly it's, there's a, there's thesis in there. Um, we didn't do much of the theory in the design right class, um, but there's a, there's a deep theory about hypertext and I have a view <laughs> that <laughs> Tiddly Wiki is probably the closest thing to pure hypertext that I've ever used. Um, and so it comes very close to Ted Nelson's uh, imaginary description of how you'd write hypertext. And, um, and I keep finding these other examples. There's people who talk about xenological structures. Um, that's what, and that's a, um, um, and then Nelson talks about ZZ structures, which are these kind of three and four and five dimensional representations of data that I think you can write in TiddlyWiki that it's very difficult to write in HTML. You can generate HTML, but you can create these three or four dimensional navigational systems, I think. So if you're interested in playing in that sphere, you know, that, that's a real, that would be a really cool thesis. And then to figure out ways to visualize that, maybe you don't use TiddlyWiki, but you might use it as a, as a work table, you know, as a workbench to kind of get stuff going. Yeah, that sounds interesting. You know, so there's a, yeah, it would be kind of cool to build a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and if you see, if you take a look at some of the videos that will come out of tomorrow's, presentations um there's a bunch of the game design students in there so they're building games and um i don't know if you've seen brandon's stuff he's building a i haven't seen it exactly but it's um it's an svg navigational so he goes from room to room where each room is a different svg i did see that yep yeah. and that's going to be cool <laughs> you know and so yeah so anyway so there's lots of so i think it's it's kind of fun to play and the idea of the studio is that you can work come and work in it and so um mm. You know, if you if you want to do additional coursework in it, um, we can set it up as an independent study or a five fifty three project or something like that. So yep, that's always that, there. That sounds good. Yeah. So not that you should only do Tiddly Wiki, but you know, maybe <laughs> you only do Tiddly Wiki. You know, it's like it's, <laughs> it's like to every right. What is what do they say about the carpenters or something about nails and hammers, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I see everything as a tiddly wiki these days. It's kind of a, I used to see everything as a spreadsheet. <laughs> well, the thing is you could always put all this content in a spreadsheet like this, but it's overwhelming. And when you see the same content in a visual format, it becomes yeah. much more digestible. And that's how I look at it. Yeah. Well, it's, well, that's the, for the visualization. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool that you're doing. And I'm really excited to see people start going to the visualization because I usually stick with the texts and I'll just make these, you know, because I like the, the um, you know, navigating among parts. But um, did you ever listen to the um, um, podcast Serial? No, I haven't. Uh, so that's one of the most famous podcasts. It's a true kind crime story. Um, a couple of years ago, actually, the guy is who the case is about is I think coming up with a new trial. So there's going to be massive amounts of interest by the old serial listeners. Uh, it was 12 hours of content. Um, it's a very complex case. It's got maybe 50 characters and 25 locations and 12 months. And so all these different dimensions and they kind of go through 12 hours or so. 
And then on top of that, there was a 15 hour follow on podcast. And on top of that, there's like a 30 hour follow on top of that podcast. So there's like 50 hours of audio content that you could tag in five minute or so segments mm -hmm. with different actors. So after listening a couple years ago, I don't want to go back and listen to the whole thing again, but they talk about somebody and they say, play me all the parts of the podcast that were about this guy. <laughs> right. And then you could, yeah. you have to tag the segments with start and stop times and then use the audio player in tiddly wiki so that you're actually, you create an interface on top of somebody else's content, much in the same way that you did, but you're still dealing with the episodes. I'm talking about chunking the episodes into sub chunks that then we run an interface on top of. So we reuse somebody else's content, but slice and dice it in a different way. That would be cool too. That's interesting. I could see doing something like that with uh, historical figures. So when they discuss someone and you want to find every time Cleopatra is mentioned, you can find all the po podcasts related to that. So Well, you're still working on the podcast level, which is interesting. But you could go into individual parts of the episode too with that. Right. And you can do that with start and stop time. So you can play yep. YouTubes or audios with start and stop. But that's very time consuming, but still interesting. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so the great, thank you. And your work in this semester has been lots of fun. Thanks. So I, I've really enjoyed, um, you know, having seen your projects. Um, so that was excellent. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. And uh, yeah, so yeah. I